Hi students, today we are going to learn about terpenes and terpenoids. These are compounds which are abundantly present across the plant kingdom and thousands of molecules of terpenes and terpenoids have been discovered so far. Particularly these compounds, they are the flavors and the fragrances when we looked at these their structures and their smell and their taste. Particularly these compounds not only present in the commonly consumed foods, but also they are abundantly present in other medicinal plants also. Basically if you look at their structure, they are the carbon 5 repeated units are linked together and many molecules have been synthesized in the plant kingdom. For example, these compounds will come examples like saponins, examples like tocopherols, tocotrienols or the some of the examples of these terpenes and terpenoid molecules. Basically these compounds are flavors and fragrances, but have been shown in many of the in vitro and in vivo and animal models, they have shown anti analgesic, anti cancer compounds also have been isolated from many of the plant foods. These compounds are abundantly present in the plant foods, particularly if you look at the fruits like citrus fruits and many of the other nuts also, these compounds are very well documented in the higher concentrated sources from these plant foods. The objectives which you will learn after completion of this module, understand terpenes and terpenoids characteristics, synthesis and dietary uses, saponins and their role in physiological process, tocotrienols and their uses in biological process. Now we will look into the sources of these terpenes. Terpenes are one of the most widespread, widespread group of natural products which are abundantly present synthesized across the plant kingdom. They have many different functions in plants and animals, but for food they are mainly important as aroma components. We have discussed earlier in the introduction that these are the flavor aroma components of this terpenoids group but they have a different functions in the plant animals. The aroma of citrus fruit, for example, in your daily life, many of you might have seen that when you squeeze the lemon for the juice is different from the, from the peel if you could squeeze, a sort of volatile compounds will come. Those are the terpene group of compounds. Another example is the cinnamon and many other spices and condiments which are characterized by several of these terpenes. Common terpenes and terpenoids are limonene and citrol both in lemons, camphor, pinene, pine trees these are. Eusinol this, this comes from the cloves, anethol from the fennel and anise, thymol from the thyme oregano, geraniol from the roses and menthol. These are the molecules which are the examples and the sources of the terpenes and the terpenoids group. If you look at further, the carophylline oxide is a molecule which is extracted from the cloves, has been shown as antifungal in onychomycosis decreases the platelet aggregation. This molecule has been shown which has been extracted from the cloves. Limonene which is from the lemon has been shown in many of the studies as antidepressant, antifungal, antimicrobial, antispasmodic, anxiolytic, gastroprotective, immunostimulant. Many of the studies have been 
shown particularly with the citrus fruits. Linalool is another molecule which has been extracted and shown as analgesia, anticonvulsant, anti-epileptic, anti-neoplastic, anti-psychotic, anti-xylotic, sedative also. Another important molecule which has been extracted from the flowers, beta myrcene. It has been shown as analgesic, anti-inflammatory, anti-psychotic, anti-spasmodic, hypnotic, muscle relaxant and sedative also. The another molecule nerolidol is an example which has been shown antimicrobial and sedative. Phytol, this is very important molecule has been studied very very widely and lot of published literature is available on phytol molecule. It aids in lowering cholesterol particularly, increases the GABA via SSADH inhibition. This molecule is abundantly present in commonly consumed foods. Alpha pinin, this compound has been shown in many of the studies, acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, anti-inflammatory and gastroprotective. These some of the sources and their actions particularly has been shown in many of the in vitro and in animal studies. If we look at, at the biosynthetic principles of these terpenes, as I have mentioned these are isoprenoids by condensation of carbon 5 units head to tail. For example, they are like monoterpenes example menthone or cedrol sesquid terpenes you could see that from C5 units are joined from head to tail. Another example is about the triterpenes, this is the molecule squalene as an intermediate molecule which has been shown. And tetraterpenes, very important group of molecules, particularly the plant carotenoids, the beta carotene, which has been shown as an antioxidant, as are the scavenger, free radical scavenger or the singlet oxygen quencher. This molecule has been shown also in the humans. This has been shown as a, it has a pro vitamin A activity because it has a retinyl group and it has beta ion and rings in their structure. A very important molecule has been extensively studied in the literature. A head to middle if you could see it, there is another monoterpene example of pyrethenin is an another example of these terpenoid group of compounds. If we look at the classification, we should not have any sort of confusion because C5 is the basic unit. It was originally believed that the smallest naturally occurring family of isoprenoids contained 10 carbons that is 2 into C5 units which was thus termed as monoterpenes. Example C5 hemiterpenes, C10 monoterpenes, C15 sesquiterpenes, C20 diterpenes, C25 sesterterpenes, C30 triterpenes and C40 units tetraterpenes and C more than 40 polyter polyterpenes have been classified. If you take example of isoprene unit of 6,5 hemiterpenes, each year hundreds of millions of metric tons are emitted into the global atmosphere by a variety of C3 plants. Functions still a matter of debate particularly for these molecules. Monoterpenes, we have discussed about limonin, citrus aroma example, menthone, main component of peppermint essential oil is an example of monoterpenes. Also beta pinene which I have told you is the part of conifer essential oils is an example of monoterpenes in the classification. Sesquiterpenes example as beta ferminone. These are ephid alarm pheromones basically, they are called like ectohormones, sidrol part of cedar essential oil and capsidiol phytoelexin of pepper and tobacco are the examples of sesquiterpenes. If you now look at into the diterpenes example, GA12 aldehyde precursor of plant hormone, abitic acid part of the siluricin secreted by grandfather and also another n-benzoyl 3-phenyl serone 
is a toxol of uh, anti tumor activity particularly has been shown is an example of diterpene. If you look at the triterpenes example beta cytosterols, you look at this structure if you could rec recollect they are like cholesterol animal uh, molecules the cholesterol this plant molecule cytosterol beta cytosterol this actually they compete with the animal cholesterol and they will inhibit the absorption of animal cholesterol when you consume these triterpenes through your diet. Brachinolide is a plant hormone is an example of triterpene and you have tetraterpenes I have shown you earlier about the beta carotene. This is a molecule has been widely studied and as a vitamin A precursor as an antioxidant as an anti carcinogenic molecule and another group of molecules which are oxygenated carotenoids that are the xanthophyll group of molecules are also under the heading of tetraterpenes have been classified. Example here is a viroxanthin. You could see it that there, there is a hydroxyl group which is oxygenated really. And if you take the examples of polyterpenes, polyterpenes is an example, wonderful example is a ubiquinone. This is at the mitochondrial electron transport which is abundantly present and the plasto quinone is another example at the photosynthetic electron transport and alpha tocopherol otherwise we call it as normally vitamin E this is plastidial membrane antioxidant which actually we consume a lot every day this polyterpene particularly through the diet. And if you take the example of monoterpenoids which I have told you example of phytol of a, which also comes under polyterpenes and the transogeatine is a plant hormone and tetrahydrocannabinol this is also active principle of cannabis comes under neuroterpenoids classification. Then if you look at if you learn little bit about their synthesis also these terpenoids in the plants particularly what sort of enzymes which it has. If you look at in this uh, slide you could see that there is a monoterpene synthesis they are the modifying enzymes which have sesquiterpene synthesis, squalene synthase, triterpene synthase, FTB synthase, GDB synthase, GGDB synthase and diterpene synthases. These are the enzymes at that and they will synthesize and they will convert basically the molecules into these various monoterpenoids, sesquiterpenoids or diterpenoids or triterpenoids. If you take the examples which I have given you already about linalool, alpha penin, perilla alcohol, artemisinin, and pharmacinin are the examples of where this synthesis takes place in the plant kingdom. Now we look at the synthesis of terpenoids at the cellular level. Particularly, you could see the endoplasmic reticulum, the cytochrome P450 in the presence of terpenes, and they will be oxidized, terpenes will be there. And if you look at the pathway, basically mevalonic acid pathway in the cytosol which will take place, acetyl CoA, the presence of HMG CoA reductase, they will be the, the molecule will be get converted to mevalonic acid in the IDP, DM, ADP, and they will be in the plastid pathways which can be generated of many of the monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes also. If you look at the mitochondria where the electron transport takes place, ubiquinones which I have told you earlier particularly have been they are they are being utilized in the electron transport chain in the mitochondria at the cellular level. So now we will look into the medical medicinal uses of these terpene compounds particularly various compounds now we will look into. Medicine which is present in the citrus, clove, earthy, fruity, green, vegetative, mango. Also these are the sources. Mericin is a potent analgesic, anti-inflammatory and antibiotic. It blocks the effects of the pro-mutagens implicated as carcinogens such as aflexin B. Mericin probably affects the permeability of the cell membrane allowing more THC to reach the brain. Synergistics of THC, it blocks the actions of cytochrome, aflatoxin, aflatoxin B and other pro-mutagens. 
implicated in carcinogenesis found in small amounts in many essential oils associated with antidepressive and uplifting the behavior also this molecule has been widely studied. Limonin which I have shown you earlier slide where the citrus orders orange, tangerine, lemon and grapefruit, rosemary, juniper, peppermint are the sources for these molecule thought to enhance alertness and focused attention increases cerebral acetyl, acetylcholine activity which decreases memory losses, antibacterial and antifungal inhibits the ROS cancer gene cascade which promotes tumor growth. Limonin sprays are used to treat depression as such a potent antifungal anti cancer it is thought to protect against asparagus fungi and carcinogens found in cannabis smoke streams. Limonin inhibits initiation of cancer in the lung and memories, antispasmodic, antiviral, ACHE inhibitor, anti-tumor, anti-metagenic and also it has been shown as sedative. Dominant in essential oils of citrus fruits, the oil from seeds of the Indian Xanthoxylum aromatum found in the leaves of several native Tasmanian conifer plants. Now the other molecule example of saponins which we are going to learn about the saponins. Saponins are a class of chemical compounds found in particularly abundance in various plant species. More specifically they are commonly termed as amphipathic glycosides grouped phenomenologically by the soap like foaming they produce when shaken in aqueous solutions. That is why I have shown you in my previous slide they are like bubbles and structurally by having one or more hydrophilic glycoside moieties combined with a lipophilic triterpene derivative. So, you have both lipophilic as well as hydrophilic glucoside moieties so that it can the foam like characteristics and it will float in the aqueous solutions. What are the sources of the saponin? Saponins have historically been understood to be plant derived, but they have also been isolated from marine organisms too. Saponins are indeed found in many plants and derive their name from the soap ward plant genus Saponaria family Caryophyllaceae, the root of which was used historically as soap. Saponins are also found in botanical family Sapinidaceae with its defining genus Sapinidus, soap berry or soap nut and in the closely related families Acaraceae, maples and Hippocastanaceae, horse chestnuts. It is also found heavily in Genostemina, Pentaphyllum, Gymnostemma, Cucurbitaceae in a form called Japanocytes and ginseng and red ginseng in a form called Genesocytes. Commercial formulations of plant derived saponins example from the soap bark or soap bark tree, Quelija saponaria and those from other sources are available via controlled manufacturing process which make them of use as chemical and biomedical reagents. So, what are the uses of saponins? Saponins have shown beneficial effects on blood cholesterol levels, cancer, bone health and stimulation of the immune system. Uses in cholesterol reduction particularly, saponins bind with the bile acid and cholesterol in the intestinal tract they form small micelles with cholesterol facilitating its absorption. Saponins cause a reduction of blood cholesterol by preventing its reabsorption. Uses in reduction of cancer risk. Research studies have shown that saponins have anti-tumor and anti-metagenic activities and can lower the risk of human cancers by preventing cancer cells from growing. Saponins are assumed to react with the cholesterol rich membranes of cancer cells 
thereby limiting their growth and viability of the cells. In the immunity area, they are like an immunity booster. Plants produce saponins to fight infections by parasites. When ingested by humans, saponins also seem to help our immune system and to protect against viruses and bacteria. Reduce bone loss. Oviractomized induced rats have shown that some saponins like steroidal saponins from amelarena asafodiloids, a Chinese herb have a protective role on bone loss as an antioxidant. The non-sugar part of saponins have also a direct antioxidant activity, activity which may result in other benefits such as reduced risk of cancer and heart diseases. Now we are going to discuss about another important molecule the tocotrienols, tocopherols. Tocotrienols are the members of the vitamin E family. We learned about vitamin E, but we should also know about the, the family of this vitamin E. The other molecules are the tocotrienols. An essential nutrient for the body, vitamin E is made up of four tocopherols. We knew that as a vitamin E, but vitamin E also have four forms like alpha tocopherol, beta tocopherol, gamma tocopherol and delta tocopherol. When we have four forms of tocopherols of vitamin E, it has four forms of tocotrienols too like alpha tocotrienol, beta tocotrienol, gamma tocotrienol and also delta tocotrienol. The slight difference between tocotrienols and the tocopherol lies in the unsaturated side chain of tocotrienols having three double bonds in its farnesyl isoprenoid tail. See you, you should understand the structural difference between the vitamin E that is tocopherol and the tocotrienols. The tocopherols does not have the double bonds in their polyene structure. Whereas in the tocotrienols, they have, there is an unsaturated chain of tocotrienols having three double bonds. So tocotrienols are named by analogy to tocopherols from Greek words meaning to bear a pregnancy. But with this word changed to include the chemical difference that tocotrienols are trienes, meaning that they share identical structure with the tocopherols except for the addition of three double bonds to their side chains. The sources of these tocotrienols in the plant foods. The current commercial sources of tocotrienols are rice, palm and anato. The ratios of tocopherol to tocotrienol extracted from the rice, palm and anato sources are 50-50, 25-75 and 0.199.9 respectively. If you have little clarity on this, particularly if you take the rice extract which has the tocopherol to tocotrienols, both are 1 is to 1 in the sense 50-50. Whereas in the palm, the tocopherols are 25 percent only, the predominantly the tocotrienols you could see. The very rich source of anato if you could take, tocopherols are only very minimal that is 0.1 percent, it is almost like very rich source is the anato. The other natural tocotrienol sources include rice bran oil, coconut oil, coconut butter, barley and wheat germ. These oils also are the rich sources for the tocotrienols. Tocotrienols are safe and human studies show no adverse effects with the consumption of 240 milligrams per day for 48 months the studies have shown. So if you look at the various sources and their quantities, I am focusing here. If you look at the palm oil, the tocopherols and the tocotrienols and their total, if you look at this, palm oil has alpha tocopherol and gamma tocopherol and delta tocopherol. The, the difference what you should understand from this slide is, the tocopherol, beta tocopherol is not present in the traces may be present in the palm oil whereas 
the beta tocotrienol is abundantly present in addition to the gamma tocotrienol and delta tocotrienol in the palm oil. Rice brine oil also very rich source and barley also is also rich source for the tocotrienols. Coconut oil though it is poor it too also contains the tocotrienols of alpha, beta and gamma. So, soybean oil is also another important uh, edible oil which we consume, but uh, the, the sources still uh, it has not focused much about the tocotrienols, but it has good source of other oils also these things. So, if you look at the various sources and their quantities I am focusing here. If you look at the palm oil, the tocopherols and the tocotrienols and their total, if you look at this palm oil has alpha tocopherol and gamma tocopherol and delta tocopherol. The, the difference what you should understand from this slide is the tocopherol beta tocopherol is not present in the traces may be present in the palm oil whereas the beta tocotrienol is abundantly present in addition to the gamma tocotrienol and delta tocotrienol in the palm oil. Rice brine oil also very rich source and barley also is also rich source for the tocotrienols. Coconut oil though it is poor it too also contains the tocotrienols of alpha, beta and gamma. So, soybean oil is also another important uh, edible oil which we consume, but uh, the, the sources still uh, it has not focused much about the tocotrienols, but it has good source of other oils also these things. Red palm oil particularly cooking oil 1 teacup the measurement if you take approximately 80 grams if you take that much to achieve the required levels of tocotrienol as well as the rice bran oil, barley, wheat germ oil and the oats which also gives you the required levels of tocotrienols, but you have to consume in the higher quantities to get the requirements. So, now we look at into the synthesis of these tocotrienols. Basically GGDP that is geranyl geranyl pyrophosphate in the presence of a reductase geranyl geranyl reductase it will be get converted to phytyl pyrophosphate. In the presence of homogenistic acid phytyl transferase it will become 2 methyl 6 phytyl benzoquinol and by methylation cyclization and methylation it will be get converted to uh, alpha tocopherol. The other way the GGTP in the presence of HGGT that is homogenistic acid geranyl geranyl transferase enzyme will be get convert the 2 methyl 6 geranyl geranyl benzylphenol same the processes of both uh, the methylation cyclization uh, takes place and which will be get converted to ultimately alpha toco trienol. So, the both the pathways if you could see one pathway leads to tocopherol pathway other pathway leads to tocotrienol where you have HGGT enzyme and HPT enzyme these two enzymes the pathways of the same molecule get converted to either a tocotrienol or the tocopherol structural difference which you could see it so that you could easily remember this. If you look at the R1 group and the R2 group in the picture they have similar methyl hydrogen groups both in the tocopherols and the tocotrienols. The upper and the lower picture if you could see the structure the only difference you could see in the tocotrienol of the 3 double bonds at 3 prime, 7 prime and 11 prime position you could see in the polyene structure 3 double bonds. Otherwise they are very similar molecule only the difference is the double bonds in the tocotrienol structure. So, what are the uses of these tocotrienols? They reverse as carotid atherosclerosis. It has been proven that tocotrienols are effective in reversing carotid atherosclerosis or arterial blockage which can help prevent cardiovascular condition. In a recent study a number of people who were suffering from carotid atherosclerosis were given 240 milligrams of palm tocotrienol complex every day for 18 to 36 months 
the result showed that cholesterol plaque in the patient's carotid arteries was significantly reduced. Such effect was not seen in subjects who were given a placebo. That means tocotrienols have a very significant effect particularly in the carotid atherosclerosis. It suppresses cancer and tumor according to the medical researchers farm tocotrienols can suppress the proliferation of breast cancer cells in human beings. Delta tocotrienols are more effective than other forms of tocotrienols in causing apoptosis or cell death. In breast cancer cells that are estrogen non-responsive and estrogen responsive, gamma tocotrienols are about three times more potent than tamoxifen in preventing the development of best breast cancer. Gamma tocotrienol can also inhibit the growth of prostate cancer cells. In general, tocotrienols functions to enhance the anti-cancer properties and it can control tumor growth in certain types of cancers. Works as a super antioxidant. Well, tocotrienols are also potent antioxidants that can combat free radicals in the human body and boost the immune system. It is known that alpha tocotrienols are 40 to 60 times more powerful than alpha tocopherols as antioxidants in preventing lipid peroxidation. So far we have learned that people used to call as a uh, vitamin E is a super antioxidant when you compare with other molecules. But now what we have learned tocotrienols are more powerful than of tocopherol. Many athletes and bodybuilders use tocotrienols to prevent lipid peroxidation and protein oxidation after strenuous exercise sessions. Slows aging and protects skin. When applied topically onto the skin, tocotrienols gather at the skin's stratum corneum and they form the first line of defense against the free radicals that are generated by ultraviolet or ozone rays. As such, they can prevent skin damage and aging that are caused by unhealthy rays from the sun. By eliminating free radical activities, tocotrienols also help to maintain a healthy level of tocopherols which are essential in the prevention of skin damage. It has been found that skin that is treated with tocotrienols show very high concentrations of vitamin E which is beneficial to skin health. Other health benefits? Besides the above mentioned benefits, tocotrienols can also promote health in other ways. They can reduce platelet aggregation which is a process that can lead to blood clotting. Blood clotting is a serious condition that can result in a number of health problems which include heart illness, neurological disorders, bowel problems, weakness or paralysis of limbs and others. Also palm based gam uh, gamma tocotrienols have the ability to inhibit the development of hypertension. In conclusion, in this module structure and biosynthesis of terpenoids and terpenes we have learnt various terpenes and their uses in health and food industry with examples which we have discussed. If you recollect saponins and their dietary uses are very well discussed, their inhibition certain enzymes on cell walls and the role of saponins in helping managing cancer treatment also discussed. Important thing what we have learned in this module is about the tocopherols and tocotrienols, particularly the structural difference of the tocopherols and the tocotrienols, where the three double bond which has been shown very clearly in the tocotrienol structures. And the benefits of tocotrienols as a powerful antioxidant better than tocopherol in managing also in the cholesterol inhibition absorption and managing the skin, hepatic and pancreatic cancers also which we have discussed.